In this video, we're going to go over the Clayson condensation reaction. So in this reaction, we're going to react an ester with another ester to produce a beta keto ester. This is also known as the acetoacetic ester, which is good for the acetoacetic ester synthesis reaction, by the way, which I'll talk about in a future video. But this is the Clayson condensation reaction. So you have two esters on the left, and you get a beta keto ester. So this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon with respect to the ester. And as you can see, there's a ketone on the beta carbon, so it's called a beta keto ester. Now, in the first step, we need to use a strong base, ideally ethoxide, because it needs to match. The second thing we need to do is acidify the solution, either with H3O plus or HCl. And so let's go over the mechanism of the Clayson condensation reaction. Now, in the first step, the base is going to remove the alpha hydrogen of the ester. So ethoxide is going to deprotonate the ester molecule, giving us an ester enolate ion. Now this enolate ion is stabilized by resonance, but we're not going to focus on drawing a resonance structure. So now let's react the ester enolate with a neutral ester molecule. And so the carbon with the negative charge is going to attack the carbonyl carbon of the other ester, breaking a pi bond. And so right now we have this, and we're going to attach it to the carbonyl carbon, which now has an oxygen with a negative charge. And then here was the other methyl group, and then here's the other OET group. Now, in the next step, this tetrahedral intermediate will collapse. The oxygen is going to reform the pi bond, expelling the ethoxide group. By the way, every step up to this point is reversible. So there should be two arrows instead of one. Right now, we have a beta keto ester. And it looks like this. Now, this hydrogen is highly acidic. Our original ester has an alpha hydrogen with a pKa of about 25. And so it's not very acidic compared to the pKa of this hydrogen, which is about 11. And so since we have a basic solution, the ethoxide ion in the solution is going to immediately remove this hydrogen. This last step is not really reversible. It's product favored. So you could see that based on the size of those two arrows. And so this is the end result of the first step. So while the solution is basic, everything is going to keep going back and forth until it reaches uh, this product. So this is the product for the first step of the reaction. And so this step is not really reversible. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to acidify the solution. So once we get this product, we need to react it with HCl. And so this will give us our final product, which is the beta keto ester. Now under acidic conditions, it's not going to be reversible because in order for the reaction to go backwards, we need to we need the strong base, uh, this particular ethoxide ion. But under acidic conditions, it's not going to stay in that form. It's going to turn into ethanol. And so once you add HCl, this comes out as your final product. But under basic conditions, this is your product. So let's put it together. So under basic conditions, the two esters will react with each other. 
let's say we're using sodium ethoxide. So these two esters will react to produce the deprotonated beta keto ester. And then in step two, when you add the acid HCl, then you get the neutral beta keto ester. And so make sure you understand that. So this is the final product of the reaction. Now, whenever you're dealing with the Clayson condensation reaction, you need to use the right base. In this case, notice that we have an OET group here. Therefore, we need to use ethoxide as the base. Let's say if we chose to use hydroxide. This ester will hydrolyze into a carboxylic ion under basic conditions. And let's show the mechanism for that. So hydroxide can attack the carbonyl carbon, giving us this tetrahedral intermediate. And then this oxygen can form a pi bond, expelling the ethoxide ion. And so now we have a carboxylic acid. But under basic conditions, it's not going to last long. So we can use hydroxide or the ethoxide ion to take off the hydrogen. And so that's going to give us a carboxylic ion. And so the use of hydroxide with the clays and condensation, it's not going to be good. It's not going to give us the product that we want. It's going to give us this product. Now, what if we were to use methoxide as a base? Can we do so? Because methoxide is not going to give us a carboxylic acid. So can we use this? If we do, we're going to get another ester rather than a carboxylate group. And so this is going to be a transesterification reaction. The methoxide ion will attack at the carbonyl carbon, just like the hydroxide ion. And so initially, we're going to get this tetrahedral intermediate. And this is going to collapse, expelling the ethoxide group. And so we're just going to get a different ester which means that we can get a mixture of products. So this reaction can undergo the Clayson condensation reaction. However, you're going to have some products where you have an ethyl group and other products with a methyl group. So you're going to get a mixture of products rather than just one product that you want to get. And so that's uh, another complication with this reaction if you use a different base you can get a beta keto ester that looks like this. And you can also get one that looks like this. So you'll get a mixture of products. Because keep in mind, this step is reversible. The ethoxide ion that was kicked out, it can come back and kick out the methoxide ion. And so these two, they can kick out each other. So therefore, you can get a mixture of products if you use another alkoxide ion. Now, what happens if we mix two different esters together? So both of these esters have the same leaving group, OET. So therefore, we could use the ethoxide ion as a base. What's going to be the major product in this reaction? So let's call this ester with the two carbons on the right, ester A and the one with three carbons on the right, ester B. So we can get four different products. A can react with B, B can react with A, A can react with itself, and B can react with itself. So let's see if we can draw the products without doing the mechanism quickly. And let's see the different products that we can get. So the first thing we want to do is count the longest chain. The alpha carbon, which is carbon 2, is going to attach itself to the carbonyl carbon of the other ester. So that's carbon 3. So in this case, we're going to get a 5 carbon chain. So what I would do is start with this. Draw what you see there on the left side. And then once you have carbon 2, connect it to carbon 3. Now, carbon 3 will keep the double bond O, but it's going to lose the ethoxide group. So this is going to disappear. That's going to get kicked out. And then we have 4 and 5. So this is the product for this reaction. 
when A reacts with B. Now, let's go over the reaction where B reacts with A. So B has three carbons on the right, and A has two carbons on the right. So the alpha carbon, which is carbon 2, is going to connect to the carbonyl carbon. So the longest chain will have four carbons. And just like before, on carbon 3, we're going to have a double bond O. This is still going to leave, so that's not going to change. But notice that we have a methyl group on carbon 2. And so we need to put that here. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, and 4. As you can see, this product is different than the other product. This carbon was on this side for the other product. And so the structure is different. And so that's the product that we get when B reacts with A. Now the next one is when A reacts with A. And this was the first example that we talked about in this video. So this is reacting A. It's going to react with itself. And we did the mechanism for this reaction. So the end result is going to be the acetoacetic ester, which looks like that. So once again, the alpha carbon, carbon 2, connects to carbon 3, kicking out this group. Now the last example is when B reacts with itself. So this is going to be carbon 1, carbon 2, which we're going to attach that to carbon 3. And so the longest chain will be a 5-carbon chain. And just like before, on carbon 3, we're going to have the carbonyl group. And we have a methyl on carbon 2, which is here. And so that's how you can quickly draw the beta keto ester product of a Clayson condensation reaction. Now, for that last reaction where A could react with A or B can react with B, or A can react with B, or B can react with A. How can we direct the Clayson condensation reaction? Now, it's easy to get these products, because if you want A with A, all you need to do is just mix this ester by itself. You only need to have one type of ester in the solution. And to get B with B, you just need only this type of ester. So you can't have two different esters if you want A with A and B with B. Now, what if we want to get this product in good yield, A with B? Because if we mix these two esters together, we can get any one of these four products. But how can we mix these two esters and just get this product only, or as the major product? So the first thing you need to do is you need to have a solution that consists only of ester A. So S to B must not be in a solution. And then you need to use a strong base like LDA, lithium diisopropyl amide. And so it looks like this. We have a nitrogen with two isopropyl groups and two lone pairs. And so that nitrogen is a very strong base. Even though the pKa of this uh, alpha hydrogen is about 25, this nitrogen can completely deprotonate the alpha hydrogen. If we use ethoxide as the base, only some of the ester molecules will be deprotonated, whereas the majority won't be. Because ethanol has a pKa of about 15.9. And so the ethoxide ion can only remove a small amount of, it can only deprotonate a small amount of ester, whereas the majority won't be deprotonated. But using LDA, because it's a, a much stronger base than the ethoxide, it can deprotonate all of the ester molecules. So that prevents this from reacting with itself, because in order for this ester to react with itself, we need the nucleophilic ester to react with a neutral ester. However, if all of the ester molecules have been deprotonated, then all of it is going to be in this form. And these two they don't want to react with each other because they both contain a negative charge. 
and so they're going to be repelled by each other. Now, in the next step, you want to react it with the second ester molecule, in this case, ester B. So all of the all of ester A in its deprotonated form is going to react with ester B. So ester A is going to be the nucleophile, ester B is going to be the electrophile. And therefore, we're going to get the product for the reaction when A reacts with B. And so we're going to get this product as our major product. So the product for A and B will be the dominant product. We're not going to get the other products in any significant yield. Now, it's important to basically react this ester with LDA in a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you use one mole of ester A with one mole of LDA, when these two react, you're going to get one mole of the deprotonated ester, that is the deprotonated ester A, and then LDA will be completely consumed, which is good because once you add ester B into the solution, you don't want it to react with LDA. And so you want LDA to be completely consumed by the first ester so it doesn't deprotonate this one. Now, it's important to understand that this method is not perfect. The yield for this reaction will not be 100%. In fact, it will be less. However, out of all of the other products that we can form, the A plus B product will be the major product if we do it this way. So thus, it's a directed clays and condensation reaction. But here's how the other side products could form. So here is ester A in its deprotonated form. And once all of the LDA has been consumed, we're going to introduce ester B into the solution. Now, if ester A attacks the carbonyl carbon, it's going to give us the desired product. That is the A plus B product. Now, something else could happen because this carbon with a negative charge, the enolate ion, could take off a hydrogen. It could behave as a base instead of an acid. And if it does so, ester A will be in its protonated form. And now ester B is in its deprotonated form. So that could happen. And then B can attack A. So that's possible. Because both ester A and ester B, the pKa of their alpha hydrogens, is very similar to each other. So this step is reversible. A can deprotonate B, B can deprotonate A. So if this space takes off the hydrogen, then we can get the reaction where B attacks A. And so that's how we can still get a mixture of the other products. However, this method can increase the yield of A reacting with B rather than B reacting with A.